Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. King, I, I have a confession to make. I, I spent most of my life in the uh, retail convenience store business and had 231 stores called Tobacco Road. Along, that was many, many years ago. And everything, you know, when I read the testimony, some of it, I, I, ha I, I haven't been here the whole time, but uh, some of the things I heard sounded so much like the master settlement agreement or some of the issues that occurred in uh, retailing, selling, gray market cigarettes. Are you familiar with all that back then? And it's just such the same thing. Would you, would you kind of agree with that? Well, I think it depends on the specific issue. I mean, I've been in this field for, for two decades, um, and so I wouldn't equate the Master Settlement Agreement with the Family Smoking Prevention Tobacco Control Act, but you know, we're, we've made good inroads since then, and we're making So, good okay, good. I like that. You've been a couple decades. I've been, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you how many decades. I, I would embarrass myself. But where did all the people go that uh, filed civil monetary penalty complaints against retailers, uh, conducted 1.5 million tobacco retailer inspections. Where'd all the people go that were back then when before we came to an agreement on the uh, MSA? Well, those entities weren't regulated at that, that point. And so in 2009... What, what, what entities? You mean the e-cigarette? As so, uh, tobacco product retailers in, in general. The T Tobacco Control Act was issued in 2009, and that gave But the product point. was, I mean, the gray, gray market, when you say there are lists of legal and, and illegal, or, you know, the gray market cigarettes, some of, them, some of the retailers that weren't party to the MSA, they, they were some of the folks. You could tell, uh, I, I almost answered uh, Dr. Dunn's uh, question, because you could tell which ones uh, didn't comply because they were a lot cheaper was one of the reasons. Well, we didn't start authorizing tobacco products until we got authority in 2009. So the FDA was not responsible for issuing the pre-market applications in addition to the pre-existing products. But regulating uh, what was uh, a partner or, or part and parcel to the MSA, what was gray market, what was legal cigarettes and illegal cigarettes, wasn't there enforcement about that then? It was not enforcement conducted through the Tobacco Control Act and the Center for Tobacco. Were states uh, uh, enforcing it? There were state activities. So what happened to all those people that were doing that then? Are they, they're no longer around? And because here's, here's, here's where a little bit where I'm going. When you stood up another government agency, the CTP, with uh, over the last 15 years of 1,200 people, I go, well, where are all the other people that were kind of regulating and inspecting retailers and expecting compliance for presentation, marketing, placement of tobacco products? Why, 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 have we had to, why do we have to have a federal organization now that does what was being done by states? Well, because it wasn't done at the magnitude to adequately address the leading cause of preventable disease and death in the United States. And that's why Congress made the decision to regulate the products. In well, I'm, I'm not going to defend Congress here. I'm just, uh, I just, so do we have duplicative inspections of regulation or, or are the states out of the business now? No, we work regularly with states, including on inspections through our enforcement and compliance arm. We have arrangements with all 50 states and U.S. territories and we engage regularly on inspections and coordinate um, to enforce the law. Okay. So uh, there are as many in the state as there were before. This is just 1,200 more people done. When? Pre-Tobacco Control Act? Mm -hmm. No, there's now more resources because Congress allocated them. You're to at, Tobacco and you're Act. asking for more resources here, if I understood your Absolutely. testimony. Absolutely. We've not made enough. great progress, but we need more if we're going to combat um, this, this issue in the most impactful way possible. Com combat illegal uh, e-cigarettes coming into the country. Illicit right? tobacco products, including e-cigarettes um, coming in through the ports. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, you know, I, I'll just say uh, it's just more of, I understand, how about the, what about lithium batteries in e-cigarettes? Are you looking at that? 
We do engage with federal partners. We are aware of reports of lithium batteries exploding um, mm -hmm. on airplanes, but we also, as part of our pre-market review that Congress established, we uh, evaluate safety and, and other standards related to e-cigarette products. Which so how have you weighed in on that? Just curious. Well, in pre-market review, we, uh, we evaluate um, the integrity of the product itself, and that includes the battery, to make sure that the product is safe. If so insurance like companies are quadrupling the amount of insurance that a vape shop has to have, because they've already figured out it's very dangerous. Are, so you you haven't done anything with that? What Congress has required us to do is review the applications and okay, an safety. package of safety. Oh, forget about safety that in, in that no, respect. No, Thank, that's incorrect. I said safety, and that's included in the pre-market paradigm, including- okay, And I said, what have you done about that? What have you done about that? And this? I said- The insurance companies review, very much understand I'm not involved that. with insurance companies. I'm involved with pre-market review of applications, which is what Congress intended. That is what we have done. That is what we are doing. And that is what we will continue to do in accordance with the law. Great answer, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlemen, you